This virtual slide shows a piece of myocardium or myocardial tissue, with this being the pericardial surface with some epicardial fat. Uh, this whole section being the myocardium and right over this end, this is the endocardial surface. So we can see that there is this pale, uh, paler area over here, which is quite irregular and other areas are more densely eosinophilic. So let's look at the densely eosinophilic areas first. These are the normal areas. And what we are seeing here, of course, is heart muscle or myocardium. And these are the muscle cells with centrally located nuclei and well-preserved nuclei with very dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. Now moving on to the junction between the normal and abnormal areas, we can appreciate that over in this paler pink area, there is an abrupt loss of the cardiac muscle cells. Instead, what we have is this ropey pink material. And you can just appreciate that it is quite thick and uh, fibrillar in nature. And in some areas, it's a little bit denser and thicker. All this is collagen. And all this, uh, this tissue in this area is actually a fibrous scar. So there are some little pockets of residual uh, residual viable cardiomyocytes, but most of these pale areas are replaced by fibrous scar tissue. So you can imagine that the heart ventricle, this is the ventricle wall, will experience loss of tensile strength because of this scar here, because the cardiac muscles do not regenerate. And there will also be some associated loss of elasticity. So if the area of fibrous scarring is quite large, this may actually predispose the ventricle to dilatation because of the force of the pumping of the rest of the heart. And this can also eventually result in aneurysm formation, which you will learn about in your cardiovascular systemic pathology lesson. So this is an example of healing by repair or by fibrous repair and organization because the tissue is a permanent type of tissue, so non-dividing, unable to enter the cell cycle, and instead it is patched up by this fibrous scar.